Hello, welcome back to another Ravels video, everyone. Um, a moment to do a voiceover for this video because I completely forgot, you know, that I was muted because I'm an absolute retard. So now you're going to be listening to me talking about the deck and explaining why I'm a, a particularly bad player for this game. But first off, this Liang deck. I wanted to try Liang out again because the last time I did it, I didn't really do it very well. Um, La Liang can now move very, very slowly, but he can, he can now move. So at least he's a tiny bit more usable than usual. So I wanted to be able to depict that in various games on ladder. Um, and this is why it's in diamond. It's quite uh, convenient for me because my Liang is only level 10. I would just probably get base rush a lot of the time. Um, but this is an MSV deck. It's, for me at the time, it seemed to fit more than an ABC deck, which I tried to mention at the end of the video, but okay, and I was muted, so it, it, it's pointless. Um, but at the very end of the day, uh, I wanted to be able to like have a reason to be able to use Liang. So this is why like Slingshot and Predator, they were the two main units that I would use Liang on. Um, I suppose Pipple as well, but it'd be less reason to because it's more disposable because of it being so um, cost efficient. Um, not unlike the big two uh, specialist units at the end. But coming into the first game, uh, we do have uh, me going against Hyper here. So, uh, you know, with him being Solomon, it was a bit of an issue because I didn't want to be Ion Cannoned. Um, and that was going to be like the only thing I was scared of. Um, if I had set up on a pad or near a pad, then obviously that would have been a problem for me. But unfortunately, um, you know, that would have meant I would be concentrating on like avoiding the Ion Cannon instead of playing the game. So it's just that worry that I've done to get caught out because I don't pay attention to the battlefield that often. Um, you know. So this game, it's like, yeah, I've got the Ion Cannon, but apart from that, make sure to get MSV up, get Predator, get Slingshot. Those are the main three. Um, I can last with dogs sometimes um, at store the game, but you want to get Shock Troopers because they're just better at tackling infantry in general. So that's what I try and do. Um, dogs are not great. Again, they're great. They're all right for store. They stay, they're, they're a little better because they have a boost, but just not generally. So... Yeah, that's the game plan for this. I'll just let this game run out, um, and then I'll come back at the end. At the beginning of the second game, so I'll see you then. Unit ready. Repair systems ready for action. Unit ready. Watching the horizon. Predator. Armor moving out. So with this game against Jade, um, it's kind of a similar thing with Jade because she does put a missile down and her um, power means that it comes down quicker. Like they did reduce the, I think. They either reduce the cooldown or they increase the missile speed itself. So one of those two, but it comes down quicker. So Jade's slightly more effective now. Um, so there was that bit to worry about. But it's a lot less scary compared to Solomon because it only affects one tile unless there's some chem troopers nearby. So if you're going to be playing Jade, you obviously, you obviously have to put chem troopers nearby. Um, but I don't think this opponent had any, so it really wasn't as much of a worry as Solomon. But here I try and not go for the other pad because I needed to kill the laser drone. Um, he didn't just fly over the pad and just keep it over, you know, like most people would. They just go back and forth, so a lot of pathfinding would like keep the laser drone on the pad because even though the pad's already been occupied by a lot of enemy units, it would still count your unit being on the pad anyway. So, you know, I'm glad they didn't do that. I'm very, very glad because otherwise that would have been a little bit infuriating because I had no air units. But uh, yeah, um, I had to move my MCB out of the way. I don't know why I didn't move out any earlier than that. Um, and it was just a thing of killing a lot of air, a lot of light air, a lot of infantry, which for some reason I struggled with, as again, because I'm not particularly smart. But uh, it was it was at least doable once I had the correct units out. Um, and especially with MSV, it did make things easier. Obviously the slingshot being more effective with MSV does help a lot. Um, but it's it's the being on a two pad map just really really doesn't help. So you know there's there's pros and cons about this um, matchup, but yeah, 
Oh yeah, I forgot they had Avatar. Yeah, that, that's a thing. That, that's probably why I couldn't win. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, on to the third game. Base has been destroyed. Three, two, one. So here we are um, against Neo 12. Uh, this is again another two pad map. This is like the thing that I hate about Diamonds. I believe, I've always said this, but I hate the fact that the most of the map pool is full of two pad maps. It just makes the games really uh, either boring or it very stressful because you can't, um, you need to be like prepared, be prepared for everything. And taking Solomon with you would probably be a lot better because, again, you can clear out those pads and move in really quickly. And um, Reb Solomon, actually, it would be brilliant for Diamond League. But I don't tend to run Reb Solomon that often anymore. I might want to rethink that just so that I get out of this fucking awful league because it is terrible. But anyway, like, regardless, the, the, the deck itself, right? Um, me spreading myself between these two pads isn't the best move because I want to be able to make sure that I'm safe. That bike could have gone on the top. I don't know. I don't know why he didn't tr even try because the atmosphere is slow. But I did manage to win the missile, um, and I'm just c continually trying to build up that fortress. That's the only problem, right? Because the fortress takes a long time to build. There's a lot of vulnerability with uh, that is, um, it's 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 kind of uh, expected with this kind of deck because it's nothing. You can't churn units out like you would like to, and you've got to set it up in a specific way where you have certain units at the front, certain units at the back, so that you're more prepared for certain circumstances than others. But uh, it, it does help that I've got a Liang drone that moves. As you saw, I moved it over the pond. I was able to heal all the units. So apart from that, you know, it was it's a bit uh, exhausting trying to make sure that the pad doesn't get taken over by uh, swarms of air units that I wasn't prepared for. Like even pitbulls, if I have them on the other side of the map, it's basically game over if they just come out and sway so it's it was a uh, yeah it was a bit uh, a bit scary so yeah th that's really it for this game it wasn't really that special so i'll just uh i'll move on to the next one i'll see you in a minute Okay, so here is the the pads are, the the pads are close together, which is great. It's what I need. It'll help me. Um, but what won't help me is this goddamn rush, honestly. And I have not. I've forgotten how many people rush in this, and I'm just purely not expecting it because I'm. I've just been desensitized to it, and well, it's not really been desensitized. That's actually quite the opposite. I've just not been used to it. So I have to like. I've been putting officer out first is really really bad, and I do that a lot. So, you know, it's my own fault that I do it, but it's still annoying that I do it because I should know better. I really should expect this, and I just haven't dealt with it in such a long time. But regardless, I'm making excuses. This is kind of the reason why I'm saying I'm a bad player and everything, but, you know, take everything that I say with a pinch of salt. Regardless, the deck, still good. Again, with the pads being close together, it makes it a lot easier to set up the deck. And with them rushing as well, puts them massively behind, makes my units incredibly uh, efficient. And that's really it. It's just waiting for them to either give up or run out of money. So, you know, there's kind of, there's no point of them continuing here. I, I'll just win anyway. So yeah, I haven't really got much to say about this game, so I'll, I'll see you in the next match. So here, Red Fox, um, I know this name, um, it's, he's usually on the lower leagues because he's not really that good of a player as far as I remember, but this again, you just three pads, get the units on, I'm very annoyed that it was like double bikes and everything, and I, it, this is what I mean by 
and putting Harvester out first is, is stupid at this league and I should have known better because I've forgotten that this happened so much. So it was just a thing that I was uh, I was just oblivious to and th that got me killed. Oh well, really, it's, it's something to, I guess, remind me that uh, I need to be a lot more careful. But at least with pit bulls, you can get two, two v ones quite nicely with the, on, on the bikes. So you're easily going to be able to kill them if your opponent doesn't pull them together. I mean, here my opponent could have chased that pit bull and really been aggressive, and that would have uh, he probably would have killed the pit bull on their health. And yeah, that would have been uh, that would have been probably it for me because I wouldn't have been able to crawl back. That temper would have been lost. But yeah, it was it was it wasn't a bad game actually. Um, and that's it. Honestly, it's like. Generally, people aren't too good, but, you know, you hate yourself even more if you lose to them because, like, you, you've you already been playing lots of these bad games and suddenly you lose to someone who just who just is kind of cheesy, but not really that cheesy, but it's like, it's just not really that skilled. It's quite annoying. But anyway, uh, I'll see you in the next game. So Dan Dan, another Solomon player, um, it is, it, again, echoing back what I said at the beginning of the video. Don't want him to Solomon right in front or anywhere near my fortress because that would be very deadly, um, seeing as they have to be in close proximity to one another to be able to be um, effective enough, for my deck anyway. So for him, it'll be very easy to get rid of my entire deck should I not pay attention enough um, or anything like that. I'm surprised you put out a Shatra. That's quite a uh, quite a big investment, but because again, retard alert puts out a fucking MSV instead of a pit bull. I kind of forgot which uh, key binds the key pit bull was because uh, I'm used to it being on three, not four. But still, I should know better because I put the stack together myself. So that's just another L for me. But yeah, um, just a lot of pit bulls, a lot, a lot of pit bulls. I wish I could have switched to tanks sooner. Um, and I don't know why I put that second MSV out, but I wish I could have switched to tanks in. It just never seemed viable enough to switch to tank, get rid of those pit bulls, and be like really, really aggressive with the uh, against the vehicles. But uh, I don't know. Maybe again, maybe it's because of my lack of skill. But uh, those are my commentary for this uh, match. I will come back in the next one. Unit ready. 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 Unit 
So game against Pete again on this double pad map. Um, I hate it. Um, and I for some reason opened infantry. I don't get what the fuck I was doing there. Again, it's just re actually ridiculous. I must be mentally deficient to be pulling that out first because I know I've got a scout unit in the war factory. That's entirely why I built this deck. Or oh, one other. I guess if I wanted to lose, I should have made that obvious. But uh, regardless, I didn't. So, if I did um, lure you on with good gameplay, then I apologise. But, yeah, he's going to be going after my Harvester a lot of the time. That's generally what the entire Arrivals player base does. Bar a few people, but there's few people that are quite, you know, rare to come across. Um, and then he goes into air, I guess, I, again, something that I should have expected. And I regret going fourth dog, because that fourth dog did kill me. Um, I should have put out an air unit sooner than that. But yeah, it was it was just pain. This entire match was just pain because I made too many mistakes. And you're going to be seeing this a lot in the later games. Um, but to alleviate from this topic a little bit, um, what I will say is that it's a bit useful. Like from because the deployment area, something I forgot to mention in where I was originally recording this. Not like it matters now, but um, the deployment area for Liang, I think it is reduced quite a bit. So it's closer to your. Um, it's closer to your war factory, your your building, whatever it is. So that means you're able to um, have some risk versus reward instead of it just being easy peasy lemon squeezy all the time. So I do appreciate that. I mean, Liang is is slightly better I, because of it moving so slowly. I don't think that it's that amazing, but it, I think it's again map dependent because if you're able to. Um, deploy your drone right next to a pad, especially on the home pad, then it obviously becomes so much more useful, but uh, again, it's having that balance, you know. For this situation, it did actually help me. I was able to put a unit onto the pad that wasn't a ground unit, so I was able to like put this drone on and continuously heal my slingshot. So I'm glad I had it, honestly. It helped me get rid of that inferno and these banshees that are coming up. So yeah, it, it, it was good, honestly. Um, it, it's very, yeah, so it's very, definitely maybe very map dependent, so. It can either go from like a D to a S, like a B. I wouldn't ever class it as an A plus because it just isn't. Liang's drone moves too slowly, but I get why. I get why. It's just it does, and I can't ever class it any higher than an A, honestly. Or no, actually not in a B because I did say B, didn't I? Yeah. Any 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 higher than a B, but regardless, it's it's like meh at best. All right, same map, different faction. Um, I opened the right fucking building this time, but I still got Harvester first. I didn't know why I thought this was a good idea in the first place. It just seemed like it was. Um, I, I'm, I'm, honestly, I'm honestly baffled. Like, if you if you wanted to ask me why I did this, can't fucking tell you, mate. I really can't. This is blasphemous almost. Like, I should be playing a lot better than this, but at least like I, I should have given some a little bit of insight of what's what I think about it because Liang is 
It, w it was completely like the worst commander you could pick back before this new patch rolled out. Now it's second worst because McNeil still does nothing. But it really, it's like it's a very close second. Very close second worst. So I, uh, th I think it's like it's fine, but you you've really got to know your maps and it's a lot harder to use than it was before. Um, even with it just standing still. With it standing still, you kind of knew um, where you could place it and when not to. But uh, with it moving, it becomes a lot harder to be able to position your uh, units. So you can't really have a unit that moves about very much at all because your drone will not be able to catch up. And that's the issue. So yeah, you know, it was, uh, it, it, it was a fun few games, I suppose. Apart from the fact where I just lost because I was stupid enough to try, like, stupid fucking tactics. But whatever. Um, and that's really it. Before I like repeat myself for the rest of the video, I'm just gonna leave it for now. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll end this developer's commentary for now. Like, I go after that. Why am I going after the harvester? Like, fuck me, man. I mean, okay, I'm gonna end this before I just cringe and die. So, hopefully, you have enjoyed this video. Um, sorry for the bad gameplay, but hopefully, you have learned something. And hopefully, this has been a, a little bit enlightening for you if you're curious about Liang or anything. So I'll leave my uh, particularly horrendous gameplay to you and I'll see you in the next video. So take care everyone. Building online. Unit ready. are victorious. Establishing battlefield control. Three, two, one. New objective available. Harvester ready. Time to harvest. Unit ready. Building online. Unit ready. Shockwave itching for a fight. Dropping the let's music to my ears. Shockwave. Music to 